That's right, a man, a legend, a way of life. Apple Valley, Minnesota. Hey, Ben, you're next. It's great to have you with us on the EIB Network. Hi. Hi, Rush. Thanks a lot for the opportunity to speak with you. You bet, sir. Um, first time caller, been listening for about a year now. And I just have to say, I think you're right on just about everything. Uh, my question was, how do you think that the Republicans and Trump can manage to turn uh, this whole shutdown crisis around on the Democrats? Well, you know, you, you've been listening for a year, and to be brazenly honest with you, we've been trying to strategize this and figure this out for 25 years, uh, even longer than that. And the main thing we're up against here, uh, Ben, to tell you the truth, is the mainstream media. The mainstream media is the militarized wing of the Democrat Party. They are all in on the Democrat Party. And the and the, the mainstream media literally passes along lies and misinformation. It's not just that they're biased anymore. They are active members who are pushing the leftist and Democrat Party agenda. As such, the American people who only read the New York Times, the Washington Post, watch CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, read the Los Angeles Times or any number of magazines, Time Newsweek. Those people do not know anything you know from listening to this program. They only know what the mainstream media tells them. And from that, these polls are created. And there's one that ABC is running today that the vast majority of American people blame the Republicans if there is a shutdown. There were pre-polls on the tax cut plan. And in those polls, 76%, Ben, 76% of the American people believed that the tax cuts were only going to help corporations and would end up actually raising their taxes. It was a mind-boggling thing until we turned on CBS, ABC, NBC, and watched. And we found out that's what they were being told. ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post were reporting that the Trump slash Republican tax bill was going to raise taxes for over half of the American people. The only people that would get a tax cut would be American corporations and that that money is never passed on to the American employee who works for the corporation or the customer. And I'm sitting here, I'm mind boggled by this. I mean, common sense tells you that a tax cut means you keep more money. And yet the media had convinced 76%, if a poll was accurate, 76% of the American people thought they were not going to get a tax cut and, in fact, thought they were going to get a tax increase. Now, the truth is that everybody, 80%, maybe even 90% of the American people, are going to see much more take-home pay starting next month. And they already, many of them are getting wage increases and bonuses and expanded benefits. So the question we ask is, will they realize the media lied to them? Will they, Or will they just think the media got it wrong, or will it even register? Right now, and for every previous government shutdown since 1995, the media has gone into great detail to explain why it's the Republicans' fault. And the reasons are the following. The Republicans want your kids to starve. The Republicans don't want the poor to be able to access government services because the Republicans hate government. The Republicans don't care about immigrants or people of color because they vote for Democrats. And so as far as the Republicans concerned, if they suffer, no big deal. This is what the media has reported about the Republican Party for as long as I've been alive. So coming up with strategies to push that back, the best chance that we've ever had now is Donald Trump. He's the first Republican to ever significantly, consistently, and with strength and vigor push back against it. I agree, and I hope he does. You know, um, I think I think he always manages to find a way to win and turn the Democrat shenanigans against him. So, well, he, he, the thing about that is, we all hope that, but we don't have any data that tells us this until there are elections. I, for, I don't know about you people. I don't trust the polls that are published anymore. 
as wrong as they were about the general election, as wrong as they were about the special elections that happened last year, the polls are nothing more than a tool for making public opinion. The polls are not taken to reflect public opinion at all. The primary purpose of polls is to depress and dispirit Republican voters by making them feel constantly like they're in the minority. The purpose of polls is to reinforce among Republican voters that there's no hope, that no matter what it might look like, Republican voters are a very tiny minority of the thinking in this country. So on the tax cut poll, going back to that, 76% of the American people think the Trump tax cut's going to cost them money. It's going to be a tax increase. Only businesses are going to get tax cuts. And, of course, they never share the money. It's a it's a, an attempt, they said, to recreate the trickle-down of Ronald Reagan, which, of course, only made the rich richer. So the truth happens, and we are left to hope that the American people realize they've been lied to. Now, there are polls on the, pub, the public's opinion of the news media, and it's very, very low. But yet they still pay attention to them. They still watch them. They still listen. They're obviously still influenced by them. And then it, it doesn't matter what you read or watch. ABC, CBS, NBC, New York Times, Washington Post, USA Today, LA Times. It's identical. If you miss it in one, you can go watch the other. It's identical. The selection of stories, the treatment of the stories, the, the coverage of Donald Trump last year in the mainstream media was 90% negative. If you go pick a website right now, pick it, CNN, MSNBC, pick the New York Times website. I don't care. Pick a website. You will not find a link on the, today's FISA story. The only thing you will see is variations on the government shutdown and the Republicans being to blame for it. Or you'll see uh, some other negative story about or attributable to Trump. And it's, I don't care how long the list is, every story is going to be negative, inflammatory, defamatory, slamming Donald Trump and the Republicans. It's constant and it's oppressive. And it's only recently that the Republican Party joined Trump for all or most of last year. The Republicans did not join Trump in trying to advance his agenda because they feared he was going to be impeached, too. For most of last year, the Republicans believed the Trump dossier story. For most of last year, the Republicans believed that Trump had probably conspired with the Russians. They, too, believe the media. And it was only toward the end of the year when there became irrefutable proof that the Trump dossier was bogus. Only toward the end of the year did the Republicans in the House and Senate begin to join Trump in moving his agenda and the tax cut was the first actual piece of legislation where the Republicans in Congress got with the president to advance his agenda. Because most of the year, they were afraid to join or commit to Trump because they thought he was toast to. Because they thought he had colluded or conspired. Now they know that's bogus. So now they're a little bolder. So now they're joining Trump in the pushback here on the government shutdown. And the Republicans are trying. Ben, they're trying. Trump is trying. Mick Mulvaney is trying, calling it the Schumer shutdown. They are pushing back like we've never seen them push back before. What impact that's going to have, we won't know for a while. But it's a damn sight better than it has been. So the strategy, it's a long answer to your question, what will we do? But we're watching the Trump administration and the Republican Party basically get going on at least something to push back, where in the past, they haven't even done that. Half my brain tied behind my back, as always, to be fair, to be compassionate, to be understanding, to give people hope. Uh, Sheboygan. Sheboygan, Wisconsin. This is Ron. Ron, I have to tell you a story. I'm from Cape Girardeau, Missouri. 
And growing up, we had a local TV station, Channel 12 KFES, and a weather guy was a name named Don McNeely. Now, we're living in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, right? And he told us the temperature in Sheboygan every day. And the only reason is he loved saying it, Sheboygan. And so you're the first call I think I've had from Sheboygan in a long time. So I had to tell you that story. I'm glad you're here. What's up? Oh, that's pretty hilarious. Um, hey, Rush. So my question is, how come Donald Trump's approval numbers are not really moving up? And they're so low, even though so many good things are happening. Were you Were you able to hear my answer to the previous caller? I was. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> Drive-by media. If you believe the polls. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all predicated on if you believe them. I, 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 I think I, common sense would tell me that, uh, that Trump's numbers are better than what they're being reported. But the drive-bys, remember what drives them. Trump is unfit. Trump is gauche. Uh, Trump is obnoxious. He's a pig. He's, uh, he's a boor. Uh, he's unfit. He's on the verge of a heart attack. This has been the essence of their reporting on Trump. For all this time, he tweets and so forth. And uh, they have, I, I'm convinced, I don't know what percentage, but the American people are just pure followers. And will start echoing those, so, yeah, I don't like Trump. I wish he wouldn't tweet. I think Trump is dangerous. I think he's unsophisticated. And I think they're just a bunch of copycats. I think they're just uh, a bunch of followers. Because I I run into people all the time when, when, when the asshole story I still haven't found a person that's offended by it. I still haven't found, you know, and I'm not a hermit. I have not found a single person. And by the way, I hang around when I'm on the golf course. You know, there's some pretty powerful movers and shakers out there, the kind of people that you would think would be offended because they think of themselves as sophisticated and a cut above. And it's the exact opposite. These guys are saying, give me more of it. I haven't found a single person offended by it. The drive-by media would have you to believe the vast majority of the country has buried its head in its hands that they're so embarrassed. So bottom line, I don't think Trump's numbers are as low as they are. I don't think Trump's approval is, is as low. The media is also running polls on how the Democrats are going to clean up in the 2018 midterms because of Donald Trump, because Donald Trump is hated, because Donald Trump is despised, because people admit the mistake that they made finally, that Donald Trump makes them ashamed. And and yet, when you measure the great things and the optimistic, the positive things happening in America, it doesn't jibe, like you're asking, with the country and people hating Donald Trump. In fact, I've got a story here in the stack that the generic ballot, the, the generic ballots, when they go poll people, you're going to vote Republican or Democrat the next election. And the Democrats traditionally win that. But when you add a name and don't do generic, then the Democrats don't do as well. Well, about a month ago, there was a report on the generic ballot, you know, nationwide congressional elections, and it looked disastrous for the Republicans. It was an unmitigated disaster. The generic ballot had the Democrats winning like 60-40. Well, they just did another one. I've got it in the stack. I'll have to find it early in the next hour. The Democrat lead in the generic ballot has collapsed, at least in, in this particular one. So I, I think the standard operating procedure for you and us would be to remain ever doubtful of any of this kind of news, polling data or otherwise, that's negative toward Trump, and wait until you can somehow find a way to confirm it for yourself. You've got to realize that the purpose of all these stories is to make you who voted for Trump and still support Trump, to make you feel like you're a part of a shrinking minority. It's designed to make you think it's hopeless and no reason for you to vote in 2018. So I would say, don't listen to it. Don't pay any attention to it. All it's going to do is frustrate you. All it's going to do is make you mad. And then you're going to say, what can we do to stop it? What can we do to reverse it? And you realize that there are a lot of people working each and every day to do just that. Like here and uh, in certain places at Fox News. And in, in certain other conservative blogs. And, and there are also conservatives that are also trying to destroy Trump. 
the uh, the now famous Never Trumpers. Uh, it's an ongoing battle every day. I, we've won an election, and it's going to take much, much more than that to affect a a more than temporary change in uh, in day to day perceptions and fortunes in the country. So hang in there, Ron. That's the bottom line. 